What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be making this Red Hood armor. Uh, this isn't specifically based off of anything. This is just very much my own design and concept. And what inspired me to do this was uh, an Instagram user that goes by Ninth Circle Cosplay. You should definitely check them out. He made what I believe is the new 52 Red Hood armor and it looked really awesome. I thought, man, I really need to step up my game. So I went ahead and made this and there's a lot of cool straps and different things on here. Serves no purpose or function, it just looks cool. I wanted this to have kind of like an Arkham Games meets the whole Batman vs. Superman, Warner Brother Justice League universe style. And I even took some of the influence, even from Superman, and sort of these winged edges here. Of course, they're armor plates, not cloth looking screen printed cloth like Superman's costume but wanted to draw influence from as much of that as I could. I am wearing this with a jacket so the jacket does cover pretty much all this on either side but if I pose or move you know you can still see the side here so I just didn't want to leave it plain cloth because that's how I did the attachment. Alright so let's go ahead and jump into the build video. Alright so the first pattern piece I've made is the chest piece and I got this by some ran wrapping and duct taping my chest area and I had to cut this slit in here to get it to lay flat so I could trace it out onto the foam. For the foam I used some thick flat EVA floor mats. <coughs> Excuse me these are about mm, I want to say 12 13 millimeter thick. They're pretty heavy duty. This is what I'm going to use for the chest. For the abdominal pieces and other pieces, I'm going to use the rolled floor mat, which is around 8 to 10 millimeter thick, depending on whether you measure it on the side or on the texture. And the first thing I need to do is put some contact cement here so that I can glue these back together. And all the edges I cut straight except for the center part. You can see I cut it a bias so that whenever I glue this back together, it should have a nice curved shape and I'm going to go ahead and glue both of these now. Alright, now that I got both of these seams glued together, you can see it's starting to have some shape. I'm going to have to sand down this edge here. But before I do that, I've already gone back and used a little bit of hot glue just to help make sure this stays in place. This foam is very thick, very dense, and even with the barge contact cement, it still kind of wants to pull apart. What I want to do is start putting some shape into this side area. Right along in here, so I put some curve into it, and this top piece as well needs to slope back some. And in order to get the foam to do that and stay in place, I'm going to use a heat gun. Since I've already got hot glue on here, I'm going to be careful not to heat this up because it will cause the glue to melt, which can then burn you or get on you or any number of things. But I just didn't trust it to stay together. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this edge, and then start working my way up. Now as I get the piece hot, I'm going to start to curve and bend and shape it by hand into place. As it cools, it should help hold its shape. I'm going to do the back side first and go around and work and heat from the front until I get the shape in this that I want and need. All right, and just for comparison here, this one I heated and shaped. And aside from that ugly seam there that I'm going to have overhanging that I'm going to sand off, I mean, it looks so much better, I think, than this one, of course which is just very flat and looks kind of goofy. Now it's starting to get that shape and starting to actually look like a piece of chest armor. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that over here. I'm going to start sanding. All right, so to get rid of this edge, I'm going to start with a Dremel. I will then go from there to a 150 grit sanding block. And after that down to a 300. And if I really feel necessary, I'll use some 600 sandpaper that I have by hand and just work that out.
Okay, so as you can see, I'm nowhere near close to done, but that's just to give you an idea of about how long it'll take you, depending on how sharp your point is and how much you want to get rid of. I already got rid of a decent bit of it. And if you can't tell the difference, here's this spot side for comparison. I mean, it's like the pyramids of Giza. In comparison to this, which is already starting to get nicely rounded out. I'm going to go ahead and work on this some more, and then move on to hand sanding. Okay, so that probably took more time and effort than I really wanted to put into this with the Dremel, but I have a nice rounded edge now in comparison to before. Uh, it's not perfect, but like I say, I'm going to go through with 150 grit block and then 300 grit block and smooth and even this out. But I am done with my sanding blocks. I'm going to go back to my heat gun again, put it on high, and I'm going to use this to help smooth out all these areas where I've sanded by sealing up the foam. And I'm going to do this by putting it on the high setting. See how it's all shiny in comparison to this one, which is all dull. It's because the foam is sealing up. All right, so I've taken my handy dandy Dremel here. And I have sanded a nice, as even as possible... Uh, angle to this edge so it's not so sharp and looks less, less like a foam mat. At least I'd like to think. And I got myself a fresh thing of barge all-purpose contact cement. I'm going to dump into my empty weldwood container here. And I'm going to use that to apply contact cement along both edges and glue this chest piece together. Okay, so while I'm waiting on my contact cement to dry so I can glue these pieces together, I'm going to hold ahead and take, <coughs> excuse me, all the other pieces here that I have. And I'm going to do the same thing I did to the chest pieces. And I'm going to start to use my Dremel and put a nice angle on these. Okay, and the only real difference between the angle here and the angle on these is this is pretty much a straight angle, and on these I do my straight angle and then I round and smooth it out a little bit more, so it goes in a little bit further, but it is a little more rounded. That's just a personal preference. You can do whatever you want. In fact, you don't even have to sand these if you don't want to. Uh, I'm just doing that. And the other thing here is to keep in mind is that... Anytime you're sanding, you should probably be safer than me and wear some safety gloves. Because as you see, I'm, I'm not. But I'm also not the smartest human being okay, so in existence. I have now so sanded both the right and left side pieces. And like I said, these top pieces, I did a little more round. Any point where there's angles, I did leave them somewhat angular. I figure that'll be a nice contrast. And these side pieces, I probably put the least amount of angle on, but you're not really going to see them. I am going to be wearing a jacket. If you're not going to be wearing a jacket, you're probably going to want to make a back piece. Maybe do a little bit more work on these. But this is what I'm going with. And I want to take a second here to point out, too, that I have contact cemented this together as evenly as possible. And on the back side, I put a little bead of hot glue in the seam just as extra added protection. What I want to talk about is safety. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where this EVA foam is manufactured, but I do know, uh, talking to a supplier, that it, they don't manufacture it in the U.S., Canada, U.K., most countries, actually. Mostly places like China, uh, where they don't have as strict a laws, which means that this stuff is probably really toxic, especially if you're going to breathe it in when you're sanding. So I want to show you the difference here between these two masks. This one is brand new, this one is not. If you notice how black and gross this is, this has been used for a couple months. And this one is rated for sanding and painting with acrylics, which is what I use for my airbrush. It's not good for oil-based spray paints and adhesives. You need a different type of respirator for that. But my point is, you can see the difference here. All this black, nasty gunk that is from sanding and painting would have been in my lungs. And here you can see a brand new, fresh white one. I'm going to throw this one away because this is old and it's just getting nasty. But... Safety first, y'all. Always protect your breathing, uh, your, your airways, your lungs, 
because you don't want this stuff in there, trust me. All right, and here you can see I've already heated one side using a heat gun, and the other side you can see is flat, and there's a pretty huge difference. And I always like to heat these before I put them together, instead of trying to heat them after they're glued together. In my opinion, it just doesn't work. Even if the seams are a little off or something's a little off, I can get this straight through the contact cementing process, uh, reform it in the backside, and know that everything's going to be good, essentially, if that makes any sense. Like I say, pretty big difference here between heating and not heating. And one thing you always want to keep in mind when you heat your foam is it does shrink up a little bit. So keep that in mind. It doesn't shrink up much. We're talking maybe a millimeter overall. But there is a little bit of shrinkage. So always keep that in mind when you're patterning stuff. And if you're familiar with this, you're like, man, this guy just doesn't shut up. But if you're not familiar, I am going to show you, even though I've done this in other videos, maybe you're new to this channel, but I am going to show you what I do. To set the camera down here. Okay. So I'm going to take, let's do this piece here. This flat piece, okay. I'm going to lay it flat here, like this. And it's kind of up to your own personal technique and style as to what you want to do. I like to do the back side first. Okay, now that it's hot, it's pretty pliable. And from there, I just take my hands and I just simply give it some shape. And since I pretty much know where all these are going to fit on my actual body, I will actually place it up to my chest in the appropriate areas just to make sure it is going to fit. I'm going to go through and heat every single one of these pieces so they all, all match my up. pieces are heated and curved. I'm going to take all these side pieces here, set them off to the side with a chest piece, because right now I don't need them. The next thing I'm going to do is going to be one of several tricky parts to this build. First thing is, I'm going to put contact cement in between each of these pieces here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here. I'm going to glue each of these together. Alright, now that I have each side glued together, I've applied some contact cement to the edges here. I'm going to let this sit and then glue both sides here together. Alright, so hopefully all of this is starting to look decent and take shape. Uh, I glued these down the center with contact cement. These two are not attached. Uh, how this is actually going to work is this is going to be two separate pieces, more or less. There is going to be some elastic attaching this top and bottom. But it's going to be met so I can actually move and twist and turn and stretch back and sit down and do things like that. So this will actually be kind of comfortable. And all these other pieces are going to be attached to a piece of cloth. that's going to be coming off the sides uh, on each side of, of this bottom piece, if that makes any sense. And next, I'm going to go and start measuring and cutting my cloth so I can start putting all of this together. All right, so the next part of all this was I took and glued all the side oblique pieces together. And these are going to be contact cemented to some fabric. And the fabric is going to be attached here and coming off the sides. And will then wrap around me and attach in the back. This is going to have two straps coming off the top, which will go around the back and attach to this rear piece, all with Velcro. And as far as all the patterns that I'm taking photos of and putting up on Facebook, it's going to be these, the abdominal, and the side pieces. I just did one side, and you'll have to flip them over and trace them to get the other side. Any other, like, smaller pieces that I'm going to hand cut and put in between here, I'm not putting those pattern pieces up, uh, primarily because this has all been cut and sized to fit me. Uh, as far as your body shape and what you're going to do with yours as far as fine details, you're going to have to work that out yourself. A couple pieces I am going to add. There's going to be an angled V piece that's going to come up here. There's also going to be some elastic attaching these two, which will give me the ability to have these separate and not directly attached, but I'll still be able to move you know, my, 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 my torso down or I can stretch my arms and bring my chest up and actually move around in this so I don't feel like I'm in a full body cast as I'm trying to walk around a convention or any other thing I may be doing in this. So yeah. And to measure this fabric, you're 
probably going to need either the assistance of another person or you're going to need a mannequin torso. I use a sleeping bag because I'm dirt poor and the, it, it works more or less. But yeah, I'm basically going to lay the fabric out on it and then I'm going to lay this on top of the fabric and I'm going to draw where I want the starting and stopping points to be essentially. Okay, so here's my initial pattern piece and what I did was I took some of this stuff here uh, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. It's called like Ollie Fun or something goofy, but on the actual label that you scan, it just says craft fabric, and it's $2.99 a yard. It's dirt cheap. Uh, I would suggest actually that you probably don't use this unless you're going to back it with EVA foam, which I will once everything's glued onto it, because this stuff, first of all, isn't very durable. And second of all, I pointed out that, you know, I heated and shaped all this stuff to fit me before I even you know, traced out the patterns to glue it on. Reason for that is, this stuff is very thin. Like, you can pretty much almost see through it. It's so thin. And the thing is, this stuff is very vulnerable to heat. Like, from a heat gun. It will, a heat gun will straight up melt this stuff. It is synthetic. But, since it is synthetic, it's a little easier to contact cement and glue things to this. And what I did was, I took my sleeping bag, or if you have a torso, or a volunteer, or you use yourself and have a volunteer put it on you, I laid out a piece of the craft fabric. And once I did that, I simply figured out where I wanted the abdominal piece to fit, and then I just traced around that. And then I also went along and drew out roundabout where I wanted my side pieces here to go. And then from there, I took this initial pattern piece and I traced out two more that are gonna go on either side. And I also traced out where my pieces are gonna go so I know where to put my contact cement so I don't just have it blobbed everywhere. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue all these together. Now, one thing about this craft fabric that is highly useful is what I just did, which is to make patterns from. This stuff's really easy to cut. It's almost like cutting paper as opposed to cutting fabric. You know, there's not a lot of jagged edges and stuff. I get a lot of jagged edges because I am not the best with scissors and any sort of material of any sort. But my suggestion to you would be to use something like a semi-stretch or a stretch spandex pleather or actually get, like some legitimate nylon material that has the same type of texture that just looks super tactical and super cool. And that's the main reason why I use this fabric. It looks like something that would, with this particular type of texture, I feel like it looks like something that would be on a holster or a mag pouch or a tactical vest, you know. But it really is flimsy and cheap crap. But that's why I get it, because I don't have a lot of money and I can afford this. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and glue all this stuff together. I already applied my contact cement to my foam pieces. Now I'm in the process of applying it here as you can see. I've already put it in the areas that I've traced out to apply it. This is another thing about this particular fabric, whatever you want to call it. It just kind of sucks. It's just not very good. Is that contact cement or anything just entirely leaks right through it. I mean yeah it's fabric so it's going to absorb it. But this stuff is worse than pleather and most other things I've had to contact cement. So just keep that in mind. Wow. If you were like watching the video and not skipping around or paying attention or whatever, you'll notice at the beginning of the video I poured an entire tube of $8 a tube barge contact cement into this container. And now uh, I'm down to basically nothing. I probably used maybe 10-15% of this on everything so far and all the rest of it was literally just used on that stupid fabric because that fabric absorbs so much of it that you just blow through your adhesive. I went back to Hobby Lobby to pick up yet another $7.99 tube of contact cement. However, this store is so close to my house it's literally just right around the corner and I will just go once a day if I have to use a 40% off coupon and save myself money and get this at a much less price. Okay, so I have glued all this stuff onto the fabric here where I want it. And, of course, there was space here, so I used some scrap 2mm EVA foam to fill that in, and I also cut out some little, not that, not you, little flaky piece, but some other little square pieces that are going to be put in the center here. Just to pop back in for a little progress report as far as what I'm doing, uh, as I mentioned, these are 2mm 
that I cut pre-hand. Just kind of cut the shape. The dots in the center, I just poked holes with a ballpoint pen. And these are just some more freehand cut pieces of EVA foam I put on for detail. Also, 2 millimeter. This up here is 5 millimeter. That's to help cover the gap where the chest piece is going to come down. And just looks cool. And then over here, I took some pieces of strapping that I had. These aren't functional in the slightest. I just contact cemented and cut down pieces and jammed them in there. That way it looks functional, but it's not real. And then my random bag of goodies. I found a couple of these. These eyelets with nylon straps on. I don't know what they're for, but they look cool. So I may mount it like here. Have it going off to the side and glued here. Once again, looks functional. Serves no purpose. It just looks cool. That's it. I just take a quick step to come back in here and show you some of the more detail work. I put in all these rivets. I didn't actually legit put the rivets in. I just got a bag of these from Hobby Lobby. It was $1.77 for, I don't know, 50 or 100 of these. I got them a while ago for a Wonder Woman costume and never actually used it. But I'm using it for this. And all I simply did was press them into the foam until I could feel them come out the back. And then removed them, put a dot of super glue, and pushed them back in. And this here is that little weird thing I found, and that's just a carpet tack. And once again, doesn't have any actual, like, functional purpose. It just looks cool. And yeah. Next, I'm going to start sealing this piece, and then we're going to move back onto the chest. Alright, so I got all my straps and rivets and everything put into this. At least, I think as of now, I'm done with it. Like, this is it. I swear, I'm not going to strap or shove any more crap into this and now I'm going back to the chest piece and you can see here I've traced out the outline of my red hood symbol and I came up with this myself it's kind of a cross between the red hood symbol and the Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice or rather I wanted to look like something that would be produced by Wayne Tech from that universe even though people hate it I love the costume designs though if, you know, you can kind of see the Justice League influences with the straps and the rivets and all this crap, like Batman had. So yeah, this is my own design. And I drew this on with a ballpoint pen. And a quick tip, whenever you use a ballpoint pen to trace something out, or any sort of, like, sharp tip pen, it puts an indent in the foam. Now, if you look at this in the light, you can see there's no indent. That's because I took the heat gun and ran it over it to take that indent out. Uh, inevitably, whenever I contact cement something, I never quite get it in. And if you don't heat out that line, you'll still be able to see that line through any sort of texturing or sealing or plastic dipping or whatever you choose to do. And the reason why I traced it out here is I am going to be hand sealing this after I silicone this seam here and sand that out. But I am going to hand seal this. And I don't really want to get the sealant up here because that's where I'm going to be putting the contact cement. I want to make sure that it has a nice... Uh, unsealed foam surface to really stick it to. This I'm going to be painting separate before applying it. Oh That's man, great. I can't wait to start painting this, but I have to be patient and get to the point where I can paint it. All right, so you'll notice all this white stuff here. What it is is a type of silicone caulk from a company called DAP. They're also the same ones that make the Weldwood contact cement. And this is an all-purpose uh, uh, all acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. And uh, I actually sewed this, uh, sawed this off. The, the tube is not this short. It's a full ink caulking tube that goes in a caulking gun. I squirt it all out into a Tupperware so that I have easy access to just dip my finger or whatever into it and apply it. Now, I did this one a little different than what I do in other videos. I use this little tool here I got in the adhesive section at Lowe's. And I was just scraping out a small amount at a time and using it to fill this crack, much like I would with Bondo. And then after that dried overnight, I came in already, and I used a 300 grit sanding block to smooth this out as much as possible. And it's pretty good, but it's definitely not perfect. So I'm going to do a few additional topical layers, and I simply spread it on with my finger, and then I dip my finger in some regular old tap water, and I use that to smooth it out. And that's why you want to get this brand or just an acrylic silicone, any sort of uh, latex silicone mixture with acrylic. The latex itself breaks down naturally pretty quick, but the silicone itself usually lasts for 20, 30, 40 years. This one I think has a 20 year guarantee.
So the silicone acts as a stabilizer with the with the latex, and since it's acrylic, you can thin it out with water, which means, like I was just saying, you can use some regular old tap water on your finger to smooth out the silicone that you have spread on it. Once that dries, you can then sand it. And a lot of times I film myself doing this process, but I'm not in this video, I'm just doing a quick explanation, because... A, screen time, and B, it's just two small seams. And the truth is, had these seams not separated slightly like they had, I probably wouldn't have even done this. I just would have sanded it. And if you can hear that in the background, that is my kitty who is out here saying hello and being crazy. All right, now that I'm done with the siliconing up on this chest piece, what I'm going to have to do next is attach these two together. And they're not going to be solidly attached, like I said. Um... But I need to figure out where this is going to have to sit so I can glue some elastic to the rear of it. And this is 1 and 5 eighths inch elastic. I also use it on my Punisher uh, armor build. And what I'm going to do is this is going to be glued to the back side of this and the back side of this. And I'm going to glue it in at an angle. So it's going to have kind of a V, and it's going to be coming down behind where this open space, this gap is here. So you'll be able to see this underneath. And it'll be glued, like I say, up here on the backside and here underneath. And that way, whenever I need to stretch or move or turn or sit down, I can actually move a little bit more in this costume. It's going to have more mobility than, say, just one solid piece. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to put straps on here. And the straps are going to go up over my shoulders. And I'm going to be wearing a leather jacket. And this leather jacket in particular that I have is extremely heavy. Uh, it was handmade in 1980, which is the year I was born. And it's as old as me, and it is super heavy. So there's several things I could use for straps. I could use elastic, and that'd be fine. But I want something solid. I don't want something that's going to stretch. Uh, so that's out. And I could take some EVA foam, 5 millimeter, put some of that craft fabric on it with some spray adhesive or contact cement and have that. But I don't think it's going to be super comfortable. What I do have is an old book bag. And I'm going to cut the shoulder straps off of it to save time and money and make sure I have something nice and soft and comfortable for my shoulders. And I'm going to attach them to the back here. And for me to figure all this out, there's no like scientific method per se for this, except I'm going to stand and first I'm going to, since I already have all this bottom piece built, I'm going to attach this to the lower part of my body, line up where this is, and that'll give me an idea of where to glue my elastic underneath here for the backside. And the same thing, I'm just going to look in the mirror to align where I'm going to attach my straps. I'm going to glue all that stuff together. Okay, and then I'll be so I'm about to glue these backpack straps to this and I've applied my contact cement but since this is such a porous surface and this is also a porous surface and this is also cloth what I end up doing with this is I apply my first layer of contact cement to each surface to be bonded and then I let it sit for the 20 minute dry time then I go back and I apply a secondary layer and it even does say that on the bottle for usage apply a second coat for extremely poor surfaces and I figure that goes double since this is a fabric of some sort granted it's a mostly synthetic fabric and with a heat gun it'll melt so I mean it's not like it's you know cotton or something where whenever you hit it with a heat gun it'll catch fire it'll brown it'll burn but it's not gonna melt but this is mostly a synthetic uh, plastic based uh, fiber for the material and Despite that, I still put on two layers, but the second layer I usually let sit closer to a half hour because it just doesn't dry to the tackiness. Already it's been 20 minutes and it's still not ready for these two to be attached. So this is a long, patient process and waiting game of waiting close to an hour from start to finish for these to be ready to be bonded, but trust me, it's worth the extra time and effort. All right, so I got my shoulder straps glued on from the back and I also put a couple of rivets in there just to make it look legit, even though it's actually not. And of course you'll notice these straps are purple. I will be airbrushing them black. And these, I just cut out a kind of a T piece here for them to attach on the back. And next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna mount my elastic on the back of here because this is going to be glued of course to the lower abdominal piece 
All right, so I got my elastic pieces size and I figured out where they had to go and I traced that out with a Sharpie. And then I took my Dremel and I sanded all this down so that the elastic would fit more flush with the actual piece of my body so it's not gonna be pushed up or anything all crazy right here. I do that on both sides and I'm gonna go ahead and glue these on. All right, so here it is all fully assembled. Well, until I decide to put more stuff on it. Still have a couple more rivets to put in down here. But you can see all this is glued together to this T piece that I made. And what I haven't put on yet still is a piece of elastic that's going to have Velcro that'll attach down here on the back. But in here you can see I glued in my two Velcro straps. And this will allow me to twist and turn and move, sit down, stretch, lean back, strike different poses. But I won't have to be totally uncomfortable and just kind of stuck down in one position while wearing this. I can move around and flex and turn and I'll be a lot more mobile than just having one solid stiff piece. Alright, I'm going to start sealing this now. And as I've already mentioned before, I traced out this area here. So I can avoid getting any of my sealer on it. And to help facilitate that, I've kept my paper pattern that I originally drew out for this symbol. And I'm going to use some masking tape to stick this here. Just to help give me a little extra, especially whenever I'm airbrushing this after sealing it. I'm going to definitely not want to get any of the paint in here either. Because any of the paint that I get in here, whenever I go to glue on my symbol, it's going to help it to adhere better, especially with the contact cement, if this is all open. And what I mean by open is it doesn't have paint or sealant or anything on it. I want the foam to bond to the foam. So it's another thing if you're going to not hand seal it and you're going to seal it with uh, plastic or something like that, you definitely may want to mask off your area unless you're just going to glue it to it, seal the whole thing, and just hand paint it or airbrush it with everything on it. I'm going to airbrush my symbol separate because a lot of techniques and things that I need to do on that. And to seal this by hand, what I'm going to use is some Mod Podge. You can get this at any craft store pretty much. I got this at Hobby Lobby. And I just use a paintbrush to apply it. And whenever doing this, the more coats you put on, the more the brush strokes are going to show up. So you can always thin this out and run it through an airbrush and spray it on if you want an even more placid plate coat. Or if you actually want the strokes, which I do, because I want this to look like it's some sort of like crazy material, uh, I'll, I'll put on a couple coats, but I keep the brush strokes consistent. And for example, up here, I'm going to run the brush strokes this way on this piece, and the opposite on this piece. And then for all these abdominal pieces, all the strokes are going to go this way from the top to the bottom. And on this side, they're going to go this way from the top to the bottom. I'm not actually going to bother to seal any of this. Uh, part of the reason for that is whenever I mix up my airbrush paint that I use, I do add Mod Podge to it, so it acts as both a primer, a paint, and a sealer. But like I say, most of the reason here is I want, when the light hits it, I want you to see those lines. So it looks like metal or carbon fiber or something like that. It has a texture to it. You won't see it looking straight at it or just look painted, but whenever the light hits it, you will see that actual texturing. It'll help it to make it look like something other than just foam. While I'm waiting on my ceiling to dry on the main part of it, I'm going to start painting this. And the first thing I'm going to do is give it a layer of black. And what I've done is I've mixed some opaque Createx black airbrush paint with some water and a little bit of Windex to thin it out and some Mod Podge. So I'm getting a primer coat and the Mod Podge seal all in one. However, when you start adding Mod Podge to it, it does make it pretty thick. So you do need to thin it down and usually have to put on a few coats. But it saves me a lot of money over constantly buying cans of Plastidip. If you're not gonna make stuff like this all the time, Plastidip's probably the way to go. It's the easiest, most straightforward. But this is how I save money so I can make these videos. Okay, I've gone over this with several coats until it gets a nice wet look. Uh, that's showing me that the foam is no longer absorbing all the plastic up and paint and it's starting to just beat up on the surface. This will also give it a pretty cool texture, which should contrast with 
the texture of all the brush strokes on the rest of the armor. And now I'm going to go ahead and primer the armor as well. To prime this, I'm going to use the same mixture of black and Mod Podge and all the other etc. etc. that I just used on the other one. And using the airbrush, I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice black undercoat for all of these pieces here. And I'm going to paint. Wait for this to stop. I'm going to paint this whole entire thing black, including these purple backpack straps. Uh, the jacket should cover it, but I don't want anybody getting a glimpse of purple backpack strap. And I've applied my airbrush paint slash Mod Podge mixture together on this one as well. And just waiting for it to dry so I can go back through and start doing all my detail painting. Next, I'm going to move on to finishing the chest emblem. All right, back to the actual symbol itself. The black paint slash sealant I put on is now dry. And I'm going to use some transparent Createx red, an airbrush of paint. And I have added a little bit of Mod Podge to that, and I have thinned it down with some water and a little bit of Windex. And this stuff I'm going to put on pretty thin and just layer up. Okay, and you'll notice here that it's a little thicker towards the edge and thinner in the center. And overall, I'm just going to gradually layer and build this up on the piece until it looks the way that I want. I don't have an exact uh, tutorial on how to do this. Most of what I do is instinctual and just based on like, do I like what I see? You know, you can always repaint it or change it. Just keep in mind, whenever you're using a transparent color, Whatever you have as your primer or your base coat is obviously going to be showing through. So if you use green or white or something, you're going to end up with pink. If you use white and green, you're going to get a brown. This is a very, very dark red. Like I said, I'm going to let this coat dry and gradually just build up. Okay, of course, this is not dry. And it's quite glossy due to how wet it is. But if you look closely here, you can notice some drips and drops and splots that I did. And to get those... All I do is I work the needle until you'll notice there's a dot of red paint on there. And then all I do is just spray it air only. And it just kind of squirts out that little blurb on there. And everything else is just me shading it in. In between, you'll notice once again some thicker areas like through here and there. And so a little spike coming up here and the ears and the general, the edges with... Some of the areas in between being less uh, layered. This will give it some nice depth whenever it's dry. Like I say, right now it's wet. When the light hit it, hits it, it's just shiny. But once this right, dries, so we'll come back and look at it. I already had my red loaded up. I already went in and sprayed in my red accents in a similar technique to what I did on the symbol itself. And those are drying up. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Wicked Colors from Createx Colors. This is called Wicked Silver totally cheesy name yeah I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up and get ready to go in my airbrush and for this I'm gonna apply it pretty lightly so I have it set at around a little bit below 30 psi the working pressure is actually closer to like 12 to 15 depending on how continuously I'm applying it and this stuff I really 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 thinned out because I don't want it to go on too thick it's gonna look garish so what I'm gonna do is Similar to the red, I'm going to put on light sweeping coats and layer it. And different areas are going to have a little more than the others. And I'll come back and show you that when it's done. I have applied my contact cement to the area where I need to put my symbol. And I've also applied it to the back of my symbol. 
Now, if you're not a noob to this and you've done this a bunch of times and you're confident with getting it placed completely in the middle, contact cement's great. I'm not even going to lie, I was a little nervous about using contact cement on this. I actually considered using super glue, uh, at least around the edges or just all together. Because with super glue, there's this, you got a couple seconds. You can kind of get that centered right where you want it. With contact cement, it's one and done. Once you lay that piece down and you smooth it out, it's there. It ain't coming off. If you're going to get it off, you're going to have to rip it off. And there's chances the foam will get stuck to it. You're going to have to sand that off, etc., etc., so on and so forth. It's kind of a snowballing issue of, of problems. And I've gone through this. I've gone through this on build videos where I've had to rip a piece off, start over, sand it smooth, and then continue the video. So keep that in mind whenever you're using contact cement. I've got my symbol attached and glued on, and I did any touch-up work with the airbrush around it. And also went back through some black, just to turn this and these straps black and the straps in between, some areas like that totally black, where I got some of the overspray from the silver on it. Now I have some clear acrylic gloss coating. That's... I'm going to go ahead and spray on here. Okay, so as I apply this, I applied it much more heavily to the red areas, and in particular the symbol. A little bit more lighter here, a little less on both sides. Both sides are pretty much going to be covered by a jacket. Uh, as far as the sides of it, it's mostly just to make sure that it's nice and sealed in there, and so that it doesn't rub the paint off on the coat itself. And now, I am so excited to go ahead and try this on with the coat and some other things and right, see how so this looks. here is the armor. I, of course, don't have my full Red Hood costume on. I don't have the gloves or the neck piece or anything. But, yeah, this is how it looks and how it fits on me. feels pretty good. I like it with the jacket. You'll notice, like I say, a lot of this side stuff is covered. But it is still there. So if I move or something, somebody sees it. It's not just a plain piece of cloth. You know, I have some sort of something. And... Yeah, I am super excited to make the neck piece to integrate in with this. Put it on here with the mask. So yeah, hopefully y'all watching this think this look as good as it... Wait, correction. Hope all of you watching this thinks this looks as good and looks as awesome as I feel in it. Because I feel... Pretty, pretty good right now. I'm ready to go out, and kick some butt. All right. All right, guys. So that is pretty much it for this video. I feel like this came out really awesome. I like the way it looks, especially with the straps and everything. That very BVS meets uh, the Arkham Games type feel. It's my own. It's original. I'm stoked on it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe, leave a like, and check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and also have an Etsy store, which will soon have shippable uh, physical patterns of this that I can mail to you. If not, you can always check out, uh, download, and print your own off the Facebook page. So, hope you guys all have a great day, and thanks for watching.